Pat McArt, I want to ask you a question. Why did you tell me a lie last Monday? What, what lie did I tell you? You told me yeah. last Monday was the most uh, depressing day of the year. Oh, sorry. It's not. It's, it's today. today's the most <laughs> depressing day of the year. Actually, today's not that depressing at all. Like, the sun's shining. Oh, it's oh, beautiful. It's uh, absolutely uh, like, beautiful. No, last Monday, dude, I looked out, out, out the wonder. And I know it's a, one of the, the early uh, Mondays in January. And yeah. it was dark. It was <laughs> depressing. No, uh, and it was crap, actually. Today, uh, I was up in Larry Kenny there. I'm just back. The sun's shining. In fact, I'm quite happy today. Uh, last week, I was <laughs> pissed off. And you, co- and you coming from the dentist? <laughs> uh, uh, I was going to the dentist. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I, I find that today would raise my spirits. It's cold. I went for a walk. It was cold. Fairly cold. Uh, but, God, the sky is just scrubbed clean of clouds. There's not a cloud to be uh, seen. And, and uh, there's a lovely walk, Jude. There's a forest walk not too far. Well, it's a forest and a lake, not too far, but five minutes from where I live, and I'm tending the sunshine. So, uh, so I'm, I'm tending going walking today as well. They say they say that walking in forests is is uh, the most Good for sort of spirit healing thing you could do. Ah, uh, green. Whatever it is about forests, trees, and stuff. Okay, let's evil, leave Jude. the leave the world of nature behind us and go to the world of human nature, which is another matter altogether. And uh, the first of a number of little uh, items we have is the double jobbing issue. That is whereby MLA's instalment will now be allowed to continue or become MPs in Westminster. So what do you think? Do you think that's a very good idea? Or Well, I, I, think, as, uh, I think four of the five parties uh, are against it. The only mm-hmm. one seems to be for it. Just- um, the DUP and God, have they got a reason or have they got a reason? Uh, <laughs> it, it, obviously, uh, Sir Jeffrey uh, doesn't want to give up his Westminster seat. He wants to ride two horses. Uh, he wants to be um, over at Westminster uh, uh, because he's leader of the DUP, but he also wants to be at home riding a, a second horse. Now, see, uh, Doug, you, Doug you Media has described it as a scam. But, you uh, know, dude, you can't do, you can't serve two masters. And I think it's, you know, I think basically uh, it's a bit of control freakery. Plus, well, and t- two salaries as well, of course, and well, whatever else. Go uh, all, all the. Um, uh, well, I think they can only. Pat, I think they can only take one salary. I think they're only. Allowed I think to they take can. I but they can mix it some way too, Jude. Can't they? As far as I remember, but I'm not 100 percent certain. They're both hefty salaries, mind you, fifty-one thousand yeah. and uh, eighty-one thousand. But yeah, plus I, I, I think that it's um, it goes beyond Jeffrey wanting to have his cake and eat it. It's because. Yeah. If Jeffrey had a, if Jeffrey give up a seat, there'd have to be a by-election in Lagan Valley, yeah, and uh, th- it'd have to be somebody else standing besides instead yeah. of Jeffrey. And there's a, a, a widespread view, certainly among the Lions Party people, that the Lions Party could win it. Yep, which would be disastrous news. Yeah. I mean, yeah. imagine Jeffrey starting his career as a leader of the DUP with a loss of a seat. His yeah, own? well, that's that's that, that's more likely. But uh, it, there's all, uh, and that's certainly a, a, a possibility, and uh, in fact, it's a big possibility. Yeah. But yeah. I, I still think this whole thing. Uh, there's someone strikes me. The only people are interested in uh, are the DUP. So uh, the, uh, as Claire Hanna said it's a safety net for Sir Jeffrey and all the rest. And I, I think you're you're probably right. That they have factored oh. in that you know they mightn't oh. lose a seat, but it certainly wouldn't look good. Oh yeah, it'd be terrible. It'd be a bloody disastrous. So good. And then, of course, there's the thing. He's got to get somebody else to stand aside so he can run as for MLA. Yeah. But I mean, you get that, and he does need to be in in uh, Stormont, I think, if he's going to be their leader. But uh, yeah. uh, the 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 notion that um, uh, the British government suddenly had this brainwave that they'd allow yeah. until 2024, <laughs> until the next yeah. general election, and the then they'll stop time. again. I mean, it's, it's uh, so obvious, so bloody obvious. Yeah, that it's a sort of throwing out a few crumbs for Jeffrey. I wonder why would they give Jeffrey the crumbs though? Well, what is it? What is, oh, they, 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 do, do they, the last thing they want Stormont uh, to do, they're, uh, they're now trying to keep the DEP in, in place because he's threatening to bring all this thing. Oh, down. I see, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. And it look embarrassing, uh, all right, yeah. Uh, uh, so here, Jeffrey, we're looking after you. So uh-huh. play. You well, know, here's a, here's a co- to, go Speaking ahead. of double jobbing, Pat, here's a quotation for you. And you tell me who said this. I don't believe anybody 
can be a full-time MP and a full-time assembly member. And so I will give this commitment today. By agreement if possible, but by law if necessary, we will end double jobbing. I'll give you a clue. It was said in 2011. Probably Jeffrey Donaldson. No. <laughs> Owen Patterson. Oh! Owen Patterson, the man who lobbied so hard as an yeah. MP that not even yeah. Boris Johnson could save him. <laughs> uh, so talk about two jobs. <laughs> uh, oh, well, he got a hundred thousand, didn't he? Didn't he make oh, five hundred thousand something over five years or something? Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It really was so funny. Um yeah. that, that, that he should have been the one, you know. We, and that's there are, that kind of language is so convincing. And he says it with such yeah. conviction that you feel Jesus is a man of high principle. You know, uh, I I will give you my commitment today. <laughs> By agreement, if possible, but by law, if necessary, we will end double jobbing. <laughs> uh, but you, you know, the, the thing about you, there's, you know, like, I couldn't be editor of the Dairy Journal and run around, you know, uh, That's teaching. That's exactly school. what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I, I think I don't, I don't know. I presume, you know, the more I think about it, you're probably more right than I am. The, 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 the fear is that uh, the last thing they want to do is uh, call another election. If he gives up his M MP seat to take over uh, at Starman and the, uh, they lose Lagan Valley or, or or get a real pasting, maybe just holding on to it by the skin of their teeth, that's another slap in the teeth oh. uh, for the DUP. And that, right now, they're, they're rocky enough. Uh, because I think it was the Alliance Party. Is it a Sarka something or another? That uh, is uh, anyway, they, they, they increased their vote by about, I don't know, was it 20,000 or something? It went from uh, about 10,000 to 30 yeah, or yeah. thereabouts. A huge uh, leap the last yeah. time. So I, I would have I would put money nearly on, on uh, the Alliance Party uh, winning that seat. So well, that would explain uh, the concern of Jeffrey to not have uh, it and the Brits uh, to not have it as well, because it would be a bit of a mess if Jeffrey pulled down a uh, story. Yeah. But of course, if he did then, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 I think the Secretary of State, the British Secretary of State, can keep it up, so to speak. Uh, if uh, uh, even Jeffrey tried to pull it down, he could keep it up until the election. Uh, election um, more like uh, the elections so, in May, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, much, does can it? you imagine? Can you imagine if if Jeffrey wanted to pull it down? The Secretary of State kept it up, and then there was an uh, election. <laughs> and the uh, DP uh, was uh, going to the, you know, looking uh, for votes for uh, an institution that they were, said they weren't going to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but as well as that, you know, uh, if they if they lost if they lost the seat, do you, uh, you, you know, uh, psychologically that'd be oh, a terrible blow for them. Bad you know? news. The, bad like news. Nigel Nigel Dodds losing his seat was a a terrible blow for them uh, the last time. And if, <laughs> well, if they saw that seat, coming, you know, it's going coming for a long time. I, but was, he, he, I, I am well aware of that, but it was still a, uh, psychologically oh, and stuff. Yeah. Shocking, shocking. But uh, well, thanks be to heaven, he was sent to. Thanks be to God, he was sent to DUP heaven, which is the yeah. House of Lords. That's a lot. I, but then what he called it, Naomi Long, give them a hell of a. Uh, and Peter Robinson's old seat, is, and your other guy Robinson has it now. But like that, that was a bloody nose for a while as well. Yeah. So it's oh, not yeah. going that yeah. great for the DUP yeah. at the moment. Yeah. They're, they're rocking in, in certain areas. Right. Well, this May election will be very, very interesting. And it's only a matter of a number of weeks before they, they stop going to Stormont because they have yeah. to have a six week, seven week run at the election, I think. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be fun and games. Course, the other thing as well, Jude, they've lost what? This is, they're on their third leader in a little over a year. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> nothing but the best for the DP. DUP. Okay. Right. Right, let's move on to another. Oh, God, I'm so, such a painful story. I think we talked about it the last day. Uh, and that's the Ashley Murphy story. But oh, you, you know have the uh, poor woman that was murdered just for the uh, of people uh, um, down in, in, um, in Offaly. Um, uh, what was your, you had a particular complaint? No, about you know, I, the angle I want, you know, I think people are going to have to have a serious look at social media. We've mentioned this before. But on, on the wake of her murder, which was a horrific, this is a 23 year old, beautiful looking wee girl, talented musician, talented teacher, a beautiful daughter, a beautiful, everybody says a great human being, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in the wake of that, Jude, there was a, a guy, I would say, had a mob got him, he would have been strung up uh, on the basis of ill uh, founded rumor, 
whatever, whatever, whatever. And so on, the guy is he's Romanian. He's spoken out and he says his life's ruined. He says, right. because, uh, you know, uh, the finger pointing all the way. They've been, uh, and you, there was even photographs of him up and apparently in certain se sections of social media and so on. There have been a couple of incidents or not a million miles from where I'm living and recent months too, where there's rumours and all that. We all hear them, Jude, and so on. Like, in the old days, Jude, I was an editor of a newspaper and you were involved in the media game as well. You, you sat up and, you, you know, I, you had to sort of, you knew you had to sort of get your facts right because you were held to account. If you didn't, you either got the sack by your uh, whatever or somebody would come back at you and so on. And that's this whole thing about local, you know, rules and regulations, about fairness, about impartiality, about legalities and all that. Dude, social media, I can say anything about you uh, and you can say anything about me. And unless you, you know, want to go take a legal action or something, like that, there's nothing you can do about it. And dude, these the people thrown out things. I've seen things said on media by people. You know, if, if I said it on a, on a newspaper years ago, I would have got a solicitor's letter right away. So I'm sort of going. We need to get back to some sort of like the mob mentality that takes over on social media, dude. That's what I'm saying. And I think, and I think it's bad for society. Look, dude, and I, I keep going back to this. But look, Trump copped on that the way to get. Uh, to his supporters was to bypass traditional media because the, he knew the rules and regulations. He couldn't say do. So what he used, he used um, uh, tweets that by, and of course of what was it, these four years, I think they have said either he lied directly or misled on something like 31, 32,000 times. You know, it, one of the things he said, like simple example, that it, the United States were, uh, were paying 80% of NATO's costs you know, that the, they were picking up a tab, someone like that. The actual fact was they were picking up 22% of the cost. And by the way, the, guess which country got the most out of NATO? America. You know, the, they, they had the influence, they had the military, they had everything else. So in other words, there was all sorts of things as well. You know, the, the, he, he was making claims about the Democrats, he was making claims. So all this sort of stuff. And I, what I'm saying is there should be some accountability in the media, not just anybody able to say whatever they like, throwing out uh, opinions and not having to back it up with facts. Well, you see, but I, I was wondering, I, maybe you have too much time in your hands so you can look at social media. I, yeah. I, I, I haven't time to look at social media, yeah. but I, I, would, I would have thought a reasonable equivalent, of, but you can correct me now because I do know, you know social media better than I do. Is it that the equivalent of pub talk? Before uh, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, that'll always be there. Guys will say- uh, No, 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 hold on, hold on. Me and you sitting have a conversation. And a pub's one thing. You, mm. we, after we finish our painting, and as you walk out one side and I walk out the other, and we're away, this they putting something up on a on, on a social media that can literally be read by thousands. That it's st stated as fact. It's not pub talk to that extent. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's because it's um, it's got it's speaking with a with a trumpet to your lips when you speak. You know yeah. your uh, yeah. megaphone. It's gonna, yeah. gonna uh, everybody's gonna hear it. Um, I, I don't know that, you're not, well, I suppose they could tighten rules somehow or another in social media, but I would sort of argue the, on the other side of it, the equation. Might it be better if the mainstream media became more reliable? I mean, yeah. There are newspapers and you know uh, mainstream newspapers and you know the kind of line they're going to take. You know yeah. the way they're going to frame stories. Uh, yeah. So might not it be good if, if uh, all mainstream media whether it's broadcasting or whether it's um, newspapers, if it had a sort of a facts foundation was a necessary thing for any of the stories yeah. they put out. Yeah, but even, even the worst case isn't it, of, of the traditional media, there was rules and regulations that applied. They, mm. they just you know, they, they might have twisted uh, you know, some, some of their um, political uh, slants. But yeah. they couldn't. They couldn't change anything. The, the, the law label in Britain and Ireland is the toughest nearly in, in the world. So mm. you just couldn't say it. So, but but uh, the point I'm saying is, flawed and all as the traditional media was, and it was certainly like when you think of the Sun and use the word by yeah. God, you know, they were not exactly paragons of mm. uh, traditional media va values. But I haven't said that the Sunday Times, the Times, uh, even the Telegraph. I, the Dairy Journal people, you know, we went out of our way to make sure that if we put in something in the paper that we could stand over it and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Dude, of course we got things wrong, but
but hey, at least we check them out. And if someone then emerged somewhere down the, the road, we went out of our way usually to correct it and say, uh, reports are coming in such and such and such. It's now been yeah. confirmed that, so, you know, so, but, you know, this sort of thing, throwing something. The reason I mentioned it, Jude, that, uh, the whole, on the wake of Ashton Murphy's uh, murder, like the, the coverage was unbelievable. And it wasn't the first time. Sure, look at the guy over in England, or, uh, he was a school teacher. And remember the girl was killed, I think, around Christmas time. The guy had he move out, he had he change his name, he had he change his appearance, everything. Because uh, no, uh, afterwards he sued about four different, I think including Sky, and made an absolute fortune. But he said himself his life was ruined. You know, you said Sky, Pat, because that's where I heard about that story. And then I read yeah. about it in the, in the yeah. online newspapers. I didn't I didn't get that story from social media. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, the, the way the story was presented was that the, the cops yeah. were interviewing this guy. Uh, but at least no. they were held accountable, Jude. Ah, uh, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, uh, the thing, yeah, we'll come back again, actually, it, it might be that they, it's a way, the way people talk on social media, maybe, more often than the kind of story they tell. So they mm. say the most vile things about people. Uh, mm. And they can do that, and you wouldn't get that in mainstream media. Would that be a part no, of it? That would be a big part of it, absolutely. Mm, rather than a misleading story, although yeah, you get that yeah. too, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, the thing that strikes me, the real problem here is that in the Ashley Murphy case is this appalling yeah. violence to women. I know we've talked about it before, but I was trying to think of it. How can you, you know, make life safer for women? And I, don't, I have no idea. But what about, I mean, didn't we, everybody agreed that citizen, the Citizens Assembly was a very good idea for, it was the Eighth Amendment. Um, yeah. Why, why not, given, given the nationwide outrage with this the case of Ashley and Murphy, why did they have a Citizens Assembly to see how can our society be safer for women? Safe. No, my, my, uh, my uh, eldest son is a school teacher. My wife was on to him the other day saying, why don't, and, and I thought that was a very good point. You made some similar point, but she took it a wee bit stage further. She says, once a week in schools, why don't they teach, particularly young girls, self-defense? You know, mm. uh, and, uh, and if a young fellow wants to come up, but she says, once a week, you know, uh, get somebody in and say, look, if, if you're out here, here's, and remember you said as well, mm. uh, it's a ridiculous thing, Jude, and I, I understand why women are saying it, but I see if you're going out uh, on your own or something, take a pepper spray. Women yeah. should be, uh, I should, uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Jude, by the way, uh, uh, and I don't really want to go down this road. One thing I am actually, start, uh, there's a woman on the other day and she said, this, not all men are, are attackers. And she says, I, she says, I don't buy it. Jude, I really resent that. If I said all women are such and such, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, 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 I am not buying this. I, I can speak personally. I've never attacked a woman. I don't. I've never had a human being. I have three sons, and I don't think any of them has ever touched anybody. Mm -hmm. And all this. So this sort of generalization that all men are potential this or potential that. I, I am sort of taking offense to that. And I am. By the way, I am not denigrating the, the serious domestic violence or the attacks. But this to sort of suggest that all men are. I am going. Yeah. I, I'm not accepting that. Well, I would agree with that. And, and there is a tendency to generalize. And as you say, you know, there are many, I say the vast majority of men would have sufficient self-respect, if nothing else, that they wouldn't yeah. uh, presume to start beating up somebody who was sitting yeah. in the grounds that they were a woman or they were weaker than them. Because uh, yeah. it really comes down to bullying in the end. Uh, yeah. But uh, 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 I don't I, know. No, Jude, I, I, I am not. Hey, Jude, I, what, uh, a woman, uh, there was a wee girl on, on, I think it was Friday or Saturday. She says, I thought the days of sort of looking behind me were sort of mm. past. But she says, the number of attacks in recent times have really got me worried now when she's out on her own. And dude, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, I guess pepper spray, something like that, which would be a very uh, presumably effective thing and yet not a lethal yeah. thing. Because I'll tell you the truth. I mean, this sounds yeah. like Trump, but uh, the, the thought crossed my mind. What if every woman was equipped with a small but very sharp uh, knife. Uh. You know, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, I wouldn't shed any tears over that Ashley uh, Murphy having stabbed that guy and left him seriously wounded no. or even dead. Uh, uh. For somebody that would do that, 
But then I come back to this other thing. The guy must be nuts. Nuts. Yeah. He presumably doesn't know the woman even. Why? Oh, well, is the, well, the, the Gardaí, uh, well, all, all the media reports are saying that they're, they're working on, on the premise that it was a random attack. Oh, he did, she didn't know him and he didn't know her. What yeah. kind of a nut would you be, though, to go well, down? Should, yeah, uh, well, well, okay. should, you have to ask yourself, somebody had taxed somebody, a young woman, out for a jog on broad daylight on a towpath. You sort of say, hey, there's something seriously wrong here. Oh, I, 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 it sounded to me, if that's the case, it does sound to me like a case of for a mental institution rather than a prison. Anyway, yeah. let's, we've discussed yeah. that before, so let's move on quickly to... The question of stuff we both like a lot, Pat. Money. We both yes. like money. Uh, but we're talking here about people who have an awful lot of money. So 12 billionaires you haven't worked out at made a lot of money. Uh, well, uh, according to the Irish Times, uh, uh, they, what do you call it? Uh, they, and since the start of the pandemic, pandemic, the the wealth of the I think it's a twelve I think it's twelve Irish billionaires has yeah. increased by eight to eighteen point three billion since the start of the pandemic. You know, uh, you know, a, 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 one guy I think he's worth about nine point six. He's an Irish citizen, but he's not mm. a he's a, a Polonji mystery. I think he's a, one of the richest men in India, but he's Irish. He's married, I think, to an Irish woman. I think that's why he gets him. But anyway, like Dennis O'Brien's, I mean, two there's two boys. Patrick Collison and John Collison. Patrick's about 33. And they started this company Stripe about 10 yeah. years ago or five years ago. They're now worth 8.3 billion each. You know, but you know, another thing about it is they said of, of the increased of the uh, wealth tax of 1.5% on the these guys, it would raise enough money to probably pay for a quite substantial un, improvement in the health service. And should if if you get if you paid 1.5% tax. On eighteen point three billion, good God Almighty! Did uh, you, you would you notice it? Um, what what do, what do you call him? Um, Jeff Bezos is worth one hundred and seventy seven billion dollars. Elon Musk is a, 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 a north of one hundred and fifty billion uh, US dollars. Dude, if I took a, a, a billion and a half off you, would you, would it affect your life then? Not have you that kind of money. So, what are you suggesting should be done that they should be taxed? I, I they think they a should. Level? They have a, 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 at a certain level, it should be a wealth tax. Dude, in any fair and equitable society, in addition to whatever they had before. Aye, absolutely, Jesus, dude. Like the, the, these guys have increased their wealth. So they have had a very good pandemic. Uh, the, the EU has absolutely bunged money in to keep the system going. These right. boys have stocks and shares, which have, they have increased in value. And they are making absolute... Yeah, plus Pat, a lot of them have yeah, stocks Pat, and shares in the big chemical that's companies. What I, that's what I thought it was, that these guys would have stocks and shares and so on. So actually, they did nothing. Got nothing, this absolutely money. nothing. Yeah. But yeah. in other words, the system was what fed them this money. Yeah. And let's face yeah. it, if you were in that situation, you know, and you didn't do anything, and guys were knocking knocking on your door essentially and saying, "Here's yeah. another billion." Well, I mean, would yeah. you turn them away? I no, no, I'm not. I, I've never said I am. I, I, I'm a socialist capitalist. I believe everybody's. <laughs> <laughs> I believe everybody has the right to make money. Right. What I don't I don't accept is the right that uh, that there shouldn't be so much equity in society. I, well, I agree with you, Pat. You know, the, you know, a system that I quite like, and I don't know if it's actually observed very much, but they, didn't they have a system, and was it England or was it here, uh, that uh, CEOs were only allowed to earn a certain multiple of the average worker in that uh, that, uh, that used to be so company. true that day. Uh, and, and by the way, it wasn't a law. It was sort of a convention. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Well, that, that, I mean, I think that should be a law. In fact, uh, I think it'd be a good case for saying he only should get multiple, certain, you know, very reasonable multiples of the lowest paid worker in the yeah. company. You know, now that would yeah. put, and that would seem to be sensible because you're still allowing a guy to make a good living, uh, yeah. uh, but but you're still making sure that there's some sort of break on it. And I think the same thing could be done with these multi billionaires or billionaires. Uh, yeah. Why not have the amount that they can earn, whatever way they earn it, whether it comes to them or whether they go out and graft for it, uh, should only be a certain multiple of what the average citizen is earning, or maybe the poorest citizen is earning. Well, uh, uh, sure, Bezos is making something like an, uh, 
I'm open to correction on this. Something like 1.2 million a day, a day, every day. Right. Uh, because Amazon, like, should everybody, I, I was even stopped when I was in the dentist today. I noticed a couple of parcels coming in. You know, the Amazon stripe on them. Uh, everywhere you look, these, the, uh, there's around here, there's vans on the go, yeah, these yeah, delivery yeah. vans. They're yeah. basically taken, taken over from the post office. Yeah, everything now is, is Amazon. All right. So, so but my, again, my point would be, uh, you, I can't blame these guys. If they're doing something and the money just keeps rolling in, it's hard to say, and it's legal. I, I, it's I, 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 Dr. Collins, what you're talking across purposes. I never said I was blaming them. What I'm saying is society needs to look at it aye, and see, uh, you know, uh, see there should be a tax of some kind because mm. this, in, uh, 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 there's never been such inequality. Yeah. You know, uh, in modern times. I okay, agree. It might, I, have been, I, might have been true uh, in the days of serfdom, but, you mm -hmm. know, in this last hundred years, it's got the, the, the diversity has gone to hell. But you see, I, I agree with you completely. The, but the problem is, the, the, it's not that countries aren't wealthy, but the wealth is spread so badly. You know, it's yeah. bunched up at one end. And there's people yeah. who are living without a house, without a job, yeah. you know, anything. Yeah. So if you were in some way to tie the two together, so that the really rich guy could only make certain amount in relationship to the poorest guy. Yeah, yeah. That would be good at both ends, actually. You know, I, I, and encourage uh, exactly. people not to allow people to f fall uh, and there should be some sort of cap, there should be a cap jesus dude what, yeah. what, who does who needs 175 billion dollars jesus christ well dude, you know he, what joel uh, joel Lewis said he didn't love money he said but it soothes his nerves yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you see i think a lot of a lot of a lot of money in my, in my own experience a yeah. lot of my worries about money have been in my head you know, I'm thinking, oh, geez, you know, well, God, I've only got so much in the bank, and what am I going to, you know, and I never, I was never hungry. Yeah. I was never without a house or a bed to get into. Yeah. So much of the worry that many of us, I suppose middle classes, particularly, uh, much of it is, you know, it's, it's in your head. Yeah. But there are people uh, down the scale who, for whom money is a real worry. Hi, Richard. One one uh, one billion is you've got one thousand million. Yeah. Now, if, right. If you have, if you're Jeff, uh, Jeff Bezos and you've got one hundred and seventy-seven thousand million. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude! Come on. You don't think that that would put a would uh, disincentivize these people? Absolute bollocks, dude! Okay. Why would it disincentivize? Well, you know, I'm not going to bust my ass to try to set up a company and you know, just, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure he's not bust. I'm not. I'm sure it's many a year since he was busting his ass. He was out <laughs> flying out these space and uh, there's so much money. I'm sure he just sits there and counts it, you know. And he's got managers and all the rest, dude. Basically, capitalism is an exploitation of other people's work or labor. Ah, well, so, now we're getting to the love of it. You're a communist at heart. Uh, no, I'm a socialist at heart. <laughs> Actually, I, I would be a communist myself if I thought it would work because it makes perfect yeah, sense. That's why I, I am, I'm not a communist because I don't think it'll work. And I, I also believe that you have to give people incentives. But hey, uh, uh, there, somewhere in any sort of uh, society before the, uh, the goes, falls off the cliff, you have to have some sort of equity and equilibrium. Very interesting. Part. You said uh, you have to uh, <clears throat> give people an incentive to do work. And that's true. But yeah. if you think about it, that you're talking about a selfish incentive. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who get their kicks from doing the very opposite, from being good to people or dedicate their lives yeah. to the service of others. Yeah. And I, well, we've talked about this before. I firmly believe there's a, a huge depth of unselfishness in people. And if society were set up in such a way that people, that was the first thing that people were asked about or that they turned to was, unselfishness, helping other people. It yeah. would change the bloody society completely. But we, we, of course, there's a part of us that's selfish as hell. And our yeah. society plays on that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so but, that, uh, 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 on, that, on that note, we better wrap it up. We're, we're running well over time. Now. All it's right, then, Pat. You're not going to talk to me about dentists and doctors then, no? No, no just, just a quick one. Should, here's the point. I don't know what it's like in uh, the occupied territory. <laughs> but uh, here, in, here, in, here in the in the free part of this island, yeah, yeah. Uh, like um, 
I, you can go to your dentist and see your dentist nonstop yeah. and so on. I was, I've been up twice in recent weeks. Yeah. I'm told if you try and get an appointment with, with a, a doctor that they won't see, they can't get appointments and so on. Right. I'm sort of saying, and I presume that's true of it because of COVID regulations and so on. I mean, that's so exactly it, the part. That is yeah, exactly yeah, it. Yeah, but right, but hold on. I've one part of the medical profession, because I presume uh, you can't uh, t t pull somebody's tooth out from uh, uh, over Zoom, so, uh, yet you can diagnose. But, but yet, I, I, I'm, why I'm thinking, there was an incident within my own family there a couple of days ago where somebody got sick but couldn't get an appointment. You know, Jude, I'm just sort of saying, and I'm not just saying, uh, uh, sort of, uh, no, uh, generalizing totally, but there there, uh, there does seem to be some case where getting an appointment now you could get the hands teeth quicker. It's very very hard, very very hard. But I think two things I'd say very quickly, and then we'll stop. One is that COVID is raging, and as a result, yeah. doctors are very stretched with inoculations yeah. and all the rest of it, and people in hospital. The second thing is, and this is really a question for the medical. Uh, society or me medical organizations in general, doctors, the number of doctors that are, people, students are accepted for medicine is strictly limited. Yeah. They keep a cap on that. Yeah. So that Very in well effect, they, there's always a shortage of doctors. Yeah. Yeah. And as a result of there's a shortage, then the ones you may be sure the ones that there are, are yeah, uh, but there's a shortage living. for economic reasons. Not I not, think so. I, I tend yeah. to think so. I hate to say that now with somebody who's I've got well, my well, own well, a, guy, a guy who was a doctor told actually told, had to tell me a long time ago that yeah. the last thing they wanted was a, a, a an overflow that huh? keeps the wages high and it keeps. The, you know, the whole thing about the, the sort of mistake of the profession very high as well. Aye. It's like it's like golf clubs. You have to keep the scruff yeah. out. Put yeah. the fees high, keep the scruff out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but are you a member of a golf club? <laughs> nope. Never have been. Yeah, nor never. Have never I. No, no. Nor have I. No. Okay. I'm just checking. Good luck, Jude. Just checking. Bye, just, checking. Just, checking. Just, okay. just checking. Bye, Jude. Thank you very much.